How might COVID cause our world to change for the better? And you heard me right. I asked, how might COVID cause our world, world to change for the better? Your first reaction to that question is likely to be, oh my God, what an obscene, sickening idea to suggest that COVID might do any good for the world. How could a disease that kills people and that is shattering our economies, how could such a disease create a better world? That's certainly my own initial strong reaction about COVID because my wife and I are still in a state of shock from the deaths of four of our closest friends this year, friends whom we had treasured for 50 or 60 years, irreplaceable friendships. Yes, it really is an obscene idea today to look for any good in COVID, but what will the world be like a few years from now, when most of the world's peoples may be vaccinated against COVID. A unique thing about COVID is that for the first time in world history, and this may be why COVID really may make a better world. For the first time in world history, people everywhere are being forced to recognize that all of us now face a global problem COVID demanding a global solution. That has never before happened in human history. We have never before faced a global problem that we all acknowledged and that demanded a global solution. Jet planes guarantee that no country can solve its COVID problem by itself. As long as the COVID virus exists anywhere in the world, any country that temporarily eliminated COVID within its borders would just get reinfected by travelers from other countries that have not eliminated COVID. And that's happened. It's happened recently in New Zealand, which eliminated COVID but got reinfected. It's happened in Australia that virtually eliminated COVID but got reinfected. We recognize the global threat of COVID. But even in the worst case scenario, suppose that COVID infects every human in the world. There are 7 billion, 700 million people in the world. Suppose that COVID infects every one of them and 2% of the world's population dies. That means that only 154 million people are going to die of COVID. And that leaves 7 billion, 546 million people in the world. That's lots of people in the world. In other words, COVID, there's no way that COVID is going to exterminate the human race. And yes, COVID is clobbering our economies now, but our economies are going to recover. That makes COVID, the tragedy of COVID, a minor problem compared to the big diseases of the past. And it also makes COVID a minor problem compared to the three really big global problems that we should be worrying about and that kill people slowly and unspectacularly and that threaten to destroy our economies forever. All of you know what those three big problems of the world are. They aren't COVID. The, instead, the global problems that can kill all of us or ruin the lives of all of us and ruin our economies are not COVID, they are climate change. Secondly, they are the unsustainable use of world resources. And thirdly, they are the consequences of inequality among the world's peoples.